So, hello everyone, welcome uh, to Art and Coffee uh, Cafe Gallery. Uh, we are here in the uh, beginning of uh, uh, exhibition. Uh, where, uh, we are going to uh, be talking with Prismatic Textile. That's uh, the guy over here where I'm uh, pointing at uh, uh, green target. Uh, and uh, he created all of this wonderful art here. And he also created uh, software uh, that you can see upstairs. It's just the video, it's not the software. Uh, but um, uh, it's, it's called uh, Digital Doom. And he's going to tell us uh, all about that. He used that uh, or I understand it correctly. Uh, he used that uh, to create uh, all of these wonderful art pieces uh, around us. Uh, but uh, currently, we are here listening to uh, Blake stream. Uh, it's uh, uh, I'm Blake Hotz, and uh, what he's playing there is uh, uh, Northern Project. Uh, it's the guy over here uh, standing uh, in front of the uh, browser. Uh, yeah over there he just uh, blinked his uh, his mic and uh, his and Blake is is playing uh, northern projects uh, music so you can see it's wonderful uh, wonderful thing uh, we already had uh, northern project bands here and uh, people love it uh, very much fortunately we didn't have the time to go through a uh, whole audio track so uh, currently we are going through the second part and uh, while we are waiting for everyone uh, to join us uh, the uh, Ah, uh, we have two sisters uh, twice here, so that's cool. Uh, welcome. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, while we are waiting for everyone to join, for like uh, five, uh, six more minutes uh, at 11, 10 uh, p.m. Central European time or 5, 10 uh, Eastern time, uh, we are going to be uh, listening to this uh, uh, track and then uh, we ju uh, just uh, jump in uh, right into uh, our exhibition. Uh, and after we finished, uh, we are going to continue to after party that's going to be in Blake's place so the guys that are uh, making the stream uh, he has uh, another place here in Somnium space and we are going to jump there and have some fun uh, for it will be in VR so for uh, those of you uh, that will not be able to join us I will still, uh, still continue to stream it on Twitch so you would be able to uh, just uh, jump there and hear the music and uh, see all the cool guys there. So I will give uh, the floor to uh, Blake and uh, he's going to uh, continue playing. But I do see that it's 5.05 and I want to give everyone a fucking warm welcome to our man Artifix, Yarek holding what, once again another amazing art exhibit. I'm really excited to see what uh, what you guys got. I'm going to have you here as I finish my work day uh, playing in the background. But guys, thank you so much for these opportunities to share our artists and let them uh, let them just get another platform and share um, their sound, their emotion, and and that's the whole objective of, of this whole thing is to combine the arts. This this hive mind that's being created throughout NFTs and the metaverse and everything that this community is building is combining all the arts and it's and it's a creator's time and i'm so fucking happy about it so i gotta say big thanks to, to yark for putting this together and making this possible brother i fucking love ya and i love all you guys that i've been connecting with through this so thank you so much for everybody being so kind and accepting inside of this whole community and wanting to teach and learn and and share that really is what it's all about my yeah, let's fucking oh, go. Yeah. All right, let's get our let's let our man Artific do it. Let's raid his ass. Here we go, Artific. Boom. All right, guys, let's give our man Artific some raids. Let's go. Uh, if you guys want to sit and listen through this beautiful art exhibit, so we can hear what this artist is exactly doing and how he's portraying his emotions through his work. I, I'd love to see everybody that I've seen at these shows have been absolutely outstanding. And so I'm fucking ready to ride with just another one today. Let's go. We got eight people ready to go, and we're on the race. race, race, race. Here we go, everybody, prepare. Yarek, have a great show, brother, and I'll see you afterwards at 6 p.m. for the after party. We got a boy from India that made us a mix, and we're all going to get down on the hot house floor, baby. Let's go. Awesome. Thank you, Blake. Yeah, so if, uh, you can you can hear that there's already a very cool after party yeah, waiting for it. us there. That's awesome. That's perfect. Yeah, so uh, let's uh, let's take prismatic textiles. Let's uh, join uh, join me on the stage, and everyone, let's come a little bit closer, uh, so you would be able to hear us. Uh, there's just a reminder for everyone that's new for uh, this uh, metaverse have uh, 
spatial zone. So if you get too far or if you zoom your camera too far away, uh, you will not be able to hear us. So uh, keep close so you don't miss anything. Yeah, let's everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's tough, uh, uh, tough having uh, alter ego that's waiting for you uh, here in the metaverse. Yeah, I, I can relate absolutely. <laughs> okay, perfect. I hope everyone can can hear me. Uh, I, yeah, uh, I think uh, that there's uh, probably uh, uh, more people coming here into the metaverse. Everyone that's uh, currently on Twitch, uh, feel free to uh, join using uh, uh, the link that I posted there. I posted. Uh, one time to, to be sure uh, because it's always uh, better to he be on the party than just uh, listen to the party right so uh, so it's here and uh, yeah let's not take uh, any more of uh, the time uh, for the exhibitions and for the after party afterwards so uh, welcome uh, prismatic textiles uh, so tell us something about uh, yourself who are you and where are you coming from thank you so my name is Tom Contino, actually. Oh, uh, sorry, it, uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry for uh, jumping in. Uh, I think that's uh, not Northern uh, Project. Uh, can you please uh, mute your microphone? Uh, it basically comes for, for everyone. Ah, awesome. Yeah, there was some background noise. Uh, yeah, but it's easy to forget that the mic is there open. Yeah, so sorry. Uh, let's continue. So my name in real life is Tom Contino. And... Uh, I started doing painting when I was pretty young and I've been working on it for a while and I really started out with painting landscapes uh, but the prismatic textile series was when I started getting into abstract art and that started about 2016 and in that time I've created seven paintings and that is the first cycle of the prismatic textile paintings. So I've already started on to the next one. And they uh, they sort of evolve on their own. Um, they start with a framework, which you can see some similarities in all of them. There's a golden ratio spiral, Fibonacci spiral. Um, they're pretty similar. And each piece is sort of almost like... Uh, I would think of it as like a memory palace or a map for a memory palace. And so there's all these different ideas that are kind of woven together. And that's where I came up with the name prismatic textile, that it gives you this window into many different perspectives all in one piece. Yeah, that's uh, that's really interesting. And you actually created a software to create uh, these ones, right? Just just to tease it, I, I don't want to go into too, too much detail, but uh, I already uh, uh, said that it's upstairs. Uh, so if, uh, you you created a software to uh, to create these uh, 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 images. Uh, I think we will go far much deeper into what they actually are uh, during the exhibition. But uh, yeah, let's let's mm -hmm. just clarify this this one. So the, the digital loom software was actually created after all the paintings were made ah. as a way to bring, to bring them all together. But it's sort of, it's like a metaphor of like, you're working backwards. So as if there was a machine that actually produced all of these as a loom that wove the textiles, that was the idea of creating this experience so that people could see how, um, different layers of media are woven together and different ideas are are layered into these pieces yeah yeah so uh maybe could, could you tell us uh, let's start uh, just a little bit more uh, detail uh, with you um so uh, what's uh, could you tell us about the start of your artistic uh, career were you always the artist or uh, uh, were there something before um, well, I'm also a musician, so the music oh, and the yeah. art, they, yeah, they really, they go together quite a bit for me. Um, my instrument is the drums, so I'm always thinking in, like, ways of patterns and rhythms, and there's a lot of 
math and structure involved in the paintings that I create. And I think you can see that when you look at these. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. For, so you can see for, or for like the fractals and a lot of uh, geometry for using uh, also some for symbology, I would say. Uh, that's also based on the, mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, I can, I can see some for, like sacred geometry there, uh, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's, there's a lot of symbolism in each of the pieces and, you know, they're almost, uh, they're sort of like, uh, walking you through different phases of the creative process. So each piece represents one phase of of the project as a whole yeah th there's uh i think there are like seven for uh, steps uh to this process right and mm -hmm. not all of them are are minted uh we have six of them here in the gallery we don't have the uh actually i think uh, we don't have the first one here uh, right, which is which is uh, I think quite interesting or quite good uh, because uh, then people, if they are interested, uh, they can uh, jump uh, to your collection and find the uh, the first drop, uh, the first uh, the original piece. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, how uh, how does yeah? So, so uh, basically, as I'm seeing it, uh, like you see both the music and uh, the art as uh, uh, as like some sort of structure for almost like uh, mathematical or for geometry or something like that and uh, I would almost uh, try to say also with a lot of uh, the symbology that uh, you are trying to somehow like uncover the the, the secret uh, plan to the universe how it is how it is structured and you are trying to show that uh, to the people right Am I right? yeah that's that's a good way of putting it you know it's it's kind of looking into your own mind and and trying to come up with this map of how everything fits together and uh uh yeah so so for me the, the question is is that uh like your own mind or are you trying to discover for, or for make it for like other people for, to project their own maybe thoughts and minds to it it's a good question i i think it's kind of both ways um because i feel like anyone's mind is sort of a reflection of all the other minds around them and everything around them in their environment and so everyone's perspective is sort of reflecting things in a different way but it's all the same things that are being reflected right yeah, th that's that's where we are coming back to the uh, sacred uh, geometry. Or is it? Are you looking at it as the sacred, sacred geometry, or is it just uh, like mumbo jumbo to you, and uh, it's just a lucky coincidence that uh, as some people called it that, that way and look at it almost like a, a sacred uh, math or something like that? I think there really is something to the whole sacred geometry thing. Um, you know, and, and not so much as a symbol, but as structures that can be used as building blocks for creation. So, uh, yeah, I don't know how many people uh, know sacred uh, geometry because we already talked about it quite a lot. Uh, I think maybe if, uh, art, uh, a lot of artists do, uh, but still, uh, could you give us a little bit crash course into uh, what is it? And uh, you could maybe use even for uh, some of these uh, pictures or artworks <laughs> uh, to uh, to point to it and and explain for, for people that never heard about sacred geometry. Sure. So sacred geometry is uh, it's called different things in different circles and different people, um, but it really has a long history and it goes back, you know, to just about every culture. Um, when they started getting into architecture and art, started to discover these forms that you could use to to build things that were very complex. And it helps you find different modes of symmetry. And you can find it in nature, too, because there's things about the sacred geometry that end up being very uh, beneficial for, the, like, the way a tree grows or how um, how a shell grows or certain animals are. And so one of the, the big 
sacred geometry things that you can find in a lot of places is called the golden ratio or the phi ratio. And this is 1.618. And it's an irrational number, so it goes on into infinity. Um, but you can approximate it at 1.618. And, you know, if you look at actually the piece I'm standing in front of right here, um, you can create a spiral out of this ratio that circles into infinity. You know, you can just keep making that spiral go inwards and inwards. And what it does is it actually takes squares and you take a square. And then if you were to divide that square by 1.618, you get the smaller square and you just keep stacking these squares inwards. And so you can find this in a lot of other geometric shapes. So you can find this in a pentagon. You can find it in what's called the uh, flower of life or the seed of life, which is a hexagonal symmetry. And you can see that in this one to my right here with the, the yin-yang symbol. And then inside of it is the seed of life, this kind of flower looking thing. And it's circles stacked within it that give you this overlapping of circles to give you that symmetry. And the cool thing about it is you can take a few blueprints of shapes and come up with all kinds of really interesting geometric forms and patterns, just starting with a few basic building blocks like that. Yeah, so there, there's actually for much more. For Ultra is, is asking if, and I think it's a, it's a good question because maybe a lot of, uh, lot of people would, uh, would go that way. And uh, I think he's actually onto something. Uh, yeah, hi, Arthur. Uh, ah, we have a lot of people coming. Cool. Hello. Uh, yeah. So if it's uh, if the secret geometry, uh, secret geometry is uh, something like uh, Kabbalah. Hmm. Well, the yeah, there are there are some uh, relations to that. So the Kabbalah can be um, embedded into sacred geometry. Um, and you know, I'm I'm not like an expert on Kabbalah or anything like that, but I know a little bit about it. And you can actually fit the Kabbalah structure into the uh, the seed of life or the flower of life as a master shape. And you can use that to come up with the Kabbalah. And the interesting thing is um, you can actually create every letter in the Hebrew al alphabet by connecting nodes within that um, master structure, which I think is really interesting. Yeah, well, yeah, and I think uh, everyone that's joined us just before we started talking about Kabbalah is like, oh, what the hell? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where's this going? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if, uh, it's, it's just uh, uh, what we are talking here about is uh, uh, the structure uh, that uh, sort of structure of uh, the universe that or of uh, our mind. Uh, just uh, we are trying to go for really abstract and uh, some of these symbols and shapes uh, were actually discovered a long time ago and uh, they are part of uh, even some religious traditions uh, on which like Kabbalah and uh, some sacred geometry was built on. A lot of symbols uh, from religion actually if, uh, comes from there. So if, uh, uh, they are like archetypal in a way because you can, uh, uh, they, they seem familiar uh, to every person in, in every age. So if, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I find it uh, really interesting. And uh, also what you said uh, that it like uh, reflects uh, the, the person looking at the piece. So it's both uh, uh, Yours, you code yourself, <laughs> sort of, or your idea uh, into the artwork, but also it lets uh, uh, it. It's sort of a mirror at some in, at some way uh, to reflect. Yeah, exactly. Uh, to reflect uh, the viewer of the of the art uh, back to themselves. Mm -hmm. Because everyone's going to see it in their own way. 
and interpret it according to how they see the world. Yeah, that's that's amazing. And uh, you mentioned uh, the the digital loom. So for, uh, what about, uh, you actually created it afterward? Uh, so for, why why did you do that? So I wanted to come up with a way to take all of these paintings, and I had kind of seen this vision since I was starting with all the other paintings and working through them. Um, when you look at these paintings, they almost have a look of some sort of computer interface, like there could be buttons or, um, you know, some sort of way to use it as a control for a screen or something to happen. And I started to come up with this idea of how cool would it be to actually make these into some sort of interactive piece and tie together all the ideas from all these paintings. And so I started to make a list of uh, structures that were used within each of the prismatic textile forms. And I created a shape matrix for each one of the paintings and then other layers of media that correspond with that. So a color scheme and then rhythms that were derived from some of the mathematical uh, structures in the paintings and then combine that all together into the loom. And so the idea is that there's this kind of metaphorical object. It's not a real loom, but it's this thing that exists that you can access by using the loom software. And that this is the machine somewhere in this, you know, metaphysical space that has woven all of these tapestries, which I call the prismatic textiles. Yeah, do, when you call them the textiles, uh, do you have, uh, uh, or how do you see them used? Uh, is it just uh, just a picture of uh, to the wall? Or if, uh, when uh, when you mention textile, I almost uh, look at uh, some carpet or uh, I don't know, if, uh, uh, maybe if, uh, some sort of, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's almost a sacrilege, but uh, like a t-shirt or if, uh, I don't know, if, uh, something like that. Uh, right. It's a textile. I, I can't imagine for putting it on t-shirt. I, I would feel ashamed, but, uh, but hmm. just, just, uh, just an idea. I actually, I would be fine with them being on t-shirts, but also, <laughs> um, I, I do think there's a, there's a different level to, you know, a painting that's actually hanging on the wall. And then there's, there's also art in fabrics and, you know, these things that we often take for granted in society. And the interesting thing is when you look at textiles, that's one of the first ingredients that you need for any civilization to kind of become an, or, an organized society to have textiles because then people have clothes and there's stratifications of society and the textile itself is actually sort of a metaphor for the fabric of civilization and how people relate to each other. Wow, oh, that's much deeper than, than I originally thought. I thought and never, never thought about it this way. And I think uh, not, not many people did. That's yeah, they're, you know, because they're paintings, they're not, they're not fabric. And they're, you know, they're, they're paintings on canvas, which are a sort of fabric. Uh, but really, it's, it's this metaphorical level. And I would love to eventually have them uh, translated into fabric. There's a company where you can actually take a image and have it woven on a jacquard loom at a pretty high level of detail. Hmm. That would be pretty awesome, I guess, uh, for, for this one. Yeah, I think it worked pretty well for him. Nice, nice. I guess it's quite expensive, right? Uh, to have like a custom textile created on a high resolution. It is. Yeah, because, you know, it, it takes a lot to code the jacquard loom and and it, you know, it's a lot of thread and time for the machine to actually weave it. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I've never heard about that as well. So, so cool, so cool. 
And maybe can you tell us a little bit about uh, when we go back to the painting, uh, about the creative creative process. So uh, how do you create them? For what's uh, uh, what's is, is you said it's a painting. So what's uh, what sort of technique are you using? So these are all physical paintings. They're acrylic on canvas, and what you see here are high quality scans that have been turned into digital images. And so the process of painting these pieces, uh, it takes a long time to make one of these paintings. They're quite large and um, they start with a basic structure, but I'm not really sure how they're gonna turn out until they're done. There's sort of this general vision or a feeling that I have with it. And then I really let you know, the painting kind of just evolve over time layer by layer so there's a lot of parts of the painting that get covered up um i do a lot of writing during the process so i'll look at the painting and just you know kind of make connections of images that start to come to life in it and i'll write things down and make all these notes sometimes do some sketches in between painting sessions and then you know over time Usually over a couple months, eventually the final image will start to emerge. A couple months? <laughs> that's, yes. <laughs> that's a really long process. We are yeah, usually like well, used to talk to people of, uh, like in hours or days. Uh, yeah. Not, not really in weeks uh, le- and even less in months. So uh, that's impressive. Well, and part of the thing with these paintings is that there's sort of a meditation on time and that you can only you can only do them if you're, you know, working on it over such a long period of time because it ties together all these different perspectives. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, so uh, when I think about it, so uh, we are talking, yeah, we are talking about some digital uh, like layer on top of that, but uh, actually, uh, like like ninety nine percent of the work is done on uh, phys- in physical space. Uh, it's, exactly, it's a very traditional uh, techniques. It takes like tremendous amount of time. Uh, how did you get the idea to uh, put it as an NFT and how did you enter to the NFT space? So I've been uh, working in sort of the traditional arts community for a while at the local level and uh, I've been in a few galleries and some things like that. But what I've always found is that, you know, my art, although it is traditional in, in the way that it's created with real paint, it's not really traditional, like, you know, someone who paints portraits or um, still lifes or traditional landscapes or things like that. They're, uh, they do have a very digital kind of look to them, even though they're created with traditional mediums. And that's really the goal I had when I started painting these is to make them look like, I want them to look both very new like some sort of weird digital alien technology but also very ancient like some old tapestry you might find in a castle or um even elements of cave paintings and things like that and so i really saw um when i started to learn about the whole nft space it started to seem like a good way to merge these different worlds, this traditional art world with all this crazy, really exciting stuff going on in the NFT space. And I think there's so many different people in that space that it seemed like a a good way to connect with people who might understand what I'm trying to do here. Yeah, that's uh, it's really interesting. So it's, it's really like using or looking at the nft space as uh, as maybe not so much as uh, space where to like sell your art but uh, uh, 
how to reach much wider community of people and communicate with, uh, to people that uh, it would be difficult to reach in the physical space, right? Yeah, exactly. To to really start to build those connections that you'd never be able to make marketing stuff at a local level. Yeah, yeah. I remember for I remember for uh, you actually for uh, telling me this when we were talking uh, originally, or for, like uh, the first time we met on Twitter, uh, and uh, a little bit later there was uh, this article about the uh, uh, selling fake lands uh, in in metaverses. <laughs> uh, yeah, it just uh, like hit me. Uh, it's it's almost like the other way around, where uh, sort of uh, like we have the real community here uh, that artists can reach and uh, thrive and uh, take. Uh, uh, there's actually some cool cool ideas from ultra art, like digital alchemy and technomancy and like techno magic or something like that, uh, which combines this uh, like. Uh, sacred geometry and uh, like advanced digital stuff, but also for uh, this uh, really old archetype of uh, knowledge and pictures. Uh, and it's, it's difficult to, for, to reach uh, the, the small niche uh, that is uh, interested uh, in these things and uh, not just uh, like selling them, uh, but uh, just uh, talking to them. So for, yeah, then it, it, it almost feels to me that uh, the like the fake space is the like physical one, uh, and and the yeah. real one <laughs> is sort of here. It's like weird uh, uh, perspective. <laughs> it, it is really fascinating all of that stuff and how how everyone's trying to adapt to technology and figure out how it can be used and the communities that are just kind of evolving on their own in this space. So I, I think it is really interesting that connection of all these old ideas and almost almost sort of a uh, shamanistic type of viewpoint that starts to merge with technology and people that are interested in, you know, cryptocurrency and all of that stuff. It's really neat how all that connects. Yeah, there there are so many th so many th views uh, who you can uh, interpret uh, the space and people coming in uh, for different motivations, uh, but actually one thing that's in common, uh, talking to most of the artists, uh, is the community that uh, like uh, come for the money and stay work for the people or something like that. I I don't know. Right. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so f maybe if uh, you could tell us uh, more of, in more details about the collection. Uh, so far, we could start. Uh, well, we, we did a lot uh, about the detail, uh, like the general, but now we could start about the individual pieces. So we don't have the first one, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, still we can uh, jump around. Uh, I try to put them. Uh, well, I put them not actually in the order, so we can make it as a little treasure hunt. Uh, sort of yeah, I like that. Jumping one by one. Uh, so for, uh, let's uh, uh, lead us uh, to the second uh, uh, piece and everyone uh, follow uh, uh, the user uh, ends 568. Uh, take a close look. If you lost him, then for, you can uh, see me, Artifact and uh, try to get close because we have spatial zones, so if, uh, you don't want to if, uh, miss anything being uh, too far away. So, lead us. Okay, sounds good. So we're uh, heading over here. This one right behind me here is Prismatic Textile number two, the Language Sandbox. So there's a, sort of a way of naming all of these pieces, uh, which I, have kind of taken from uh, inspiration from classical music. So in classical music, you have formal structures such as like a symphony or a concerto. And you'll name a symphony, you know, symphony number four, and then you might have another name afterward, you know, of a kind of an unofficial name. So that's that's kind of what I'm thinking here. These are all prismatic textiles, and they're numbered according to the order they were made. And then they all have their own name. So 
Number two, the language sandbox. Um, it's, it's really taking uh, all of the stuff that you could see in the first one, and it's adding a lot more detail and things to it. But I, I think when you look at it, you can notice there's a lot of architecture, and you really get this sense of civilization and time and the footprints of human uh human history and and the the path that we've taken to get to where we are now yeah i can i can see a lot going on there maybe could you pick uh, one uh one symbol that uh, you find interesting because there's there's a lot and of course it all fits together so it's difficult to pick just one thing uh, out of nowhere uh, but uh, maybe uh, could you uh, pick one part of the picture that uh, maybe a little special for you well um the boats are definitely something that i've tried to add into a few other pieces but i think the The four point cross right in the center for me, this is this is really trying to pull your attention into this center space. And the, it's really inspired a lot by um, Tibetan mandalas and, and mandalas from other cultures as well. This, you know, center symmetry that pulls you into the center. And the interesting thing about that is these mandalas were used for meditation purposes where you could focus on the center of it and, and they actually work really well as a tool for achieving focus and neuroscientists have done studies where if you're focusing on one center point with your vision it actually triggers a process in your brain where you actually have more energy and you feel more alert when you're more focused visually like that. And that's why they're such good tools. And cool. the challenge, yeah, and the, and the challenge of looking at the Mondo is you want to be able to see the focal point in the center, but see the whole Mondo at the same time. Right, right. And you can actually extend, it, extend the exercise then, uh, like for advanced people, uh, to see like the whole picture. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> okay, interesting, interesting. Let's uh, jump to the third one. Uh, so far, I'm uh, myself curious when that one is. Oh, that's the one that... Uh, let's see. Try to remember where it is. <laughs> it might be outside. Is yeah, it at yeah. the entrance? Absolutely. Can be. Let's check it out. Yes, here we are. This is uh, this is it over here. Okay. Yeah, I think we have uh, we have uh, mostly everyone. So <laughs> let's continue. Okay. So this one is called triangulation. So prismatic textile number three, triangulation, and. You can see there's a lot going on in this. All of these paintings are built out of really three main structural ingredients. So the rectangle in the center, the golden rectangle, I call that the keystone. And that's kind of the center of your attention. And then radiating out and around the keystone, you see these dark grooves like channels that are cut into the painting. Mm -hmm. They kind of break up the picture plane. Yeah. So I call these channels. And uh, they're kind of inspired by the artist Piet Mondrian.
Oh, guys, we lost sound, so we are rebooting and we are right back. Just a second. Mechanism into the structure. So you could see on the second painting where we were before, there's wheels and gears and belts and things like that. And on this one, we have keyboards and some sort of electronic musical instrument on the right-hand side here. And those are all connected. You can see almost like cords, like on an analog synthesizer, you'd plug in cords to make your sounds. And they're plugged into this vertical line that leads up to this skull, this face. And, and that's sort of a inspired by the idea of like the chakra systems and and how that applies to psychology and different aspects of creativity yeah well for this is uh, a lot of uh yeah like most people would say for most like esoteric uh things in there but uh well actually uh, modern science is catching up and can everyone of... still hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can hear you. I can hear you. Uh, it's all good. Uh, yeah. So, for, yeah, I was actually saying something, and I had uh, mute on uh, on my um, uh, web. So, for, yeah, I was saying is that uh, it might seem a lot of uh, a lot esoterical, but actually, modern science is catching up uh, to a lot of uh, these uh, systems, and. Uh, yeah, for, actually, for, there's a lot of uh, new structures found in the body using the advanced imaging and so on. So, yeah, if, uh, there, there might be for a lot of these things that uh, you are mentioning, uh, we actually proven or some of them are already proven uh, by science. And uh, yeah, if, uh, then if, uh, when, when the, the modern science catches up, uh, you will have uh, maybe even some more uh, explanations of why uh, pictures like this uh, has uh, so deep meaning for us. So we can, uh, yeah, as Ultra Lord said in the uh, text chat, the uh, more you look at it, more cool it gets. Uh, and and it's just uh, just a digital of, uh, picture on the, like a relatively uh, lower resolution uh, compared to like the original of, uh, pictures and even compared to uh, the actual painting that you created. Right. Yeah. And, and I think you're right about that with, uh, you know, all these structures and things that are represented here. I'm really coming at this as trying to say that they're, they're really embedded in our psychology. And so with the chakra systems, you get into yoga or something like that. What it really does is it builds your awareness of of your physical structures within the body and you can create these you know psychological nodes that help you be in tune with everything you're doing and i think that's really beneficial for you know if you're into sports or um any type of field where you have to be really in tune with your body and aware that can all be really helpful and art is of course one of those type of things yeah, yeah. So, like uh, sports people and artists are uh, uh, leading this, uh, leading the way in, in this thing, I think. Yeah, because yeah, and and military as well. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> military, sports, <laughs> and artists. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah, the, the people that uh, that need stuff that are working. Okay, okay. Let's uh, let's move to the number four. Okay, onwards to number four. Back inside. Prismatic textile number four is called Pyramid. And I think you can see why I named it Pyramid, because it really looks like the profile of, of a pyramid. And this one gets a little more simple. There's kind of this trend with the paintings where 
they start out simple and then they get more complex, but then in the middle, it returns to simplicity with number four and then builds in complexity again onwards to number seven. And so this is, this is really taking some architectural structures. And I've always been fascinated with the pyramids, especially how the pyramids have these shafts cut into them where light enters. And that's kind of represented with that dark angular uh, shaft that you can see that goes into the center of the keystone. And one of the things I always found really interesting is if you look at where the shafts are cut into the Great Pyramid of Giza, it actually is kind of similar to if you take a, uh, a glass prism, you know, like the Pink Floyd album where the light shines through it, and then it comes out as a, you know, array of all the different colors. Yeah. Where, the way that the light goes through the prism is actually kind of similar to how those shafts are cut into the pyramid. And so I almost wondered if, you know, they're trying to trying to make some sort of metaphorical reference to a prism. Oh, huh, it's interesting. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, what they did, uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, everything that they uh, they did, uh, they did uh, it, uh, like great deliberation. Yeah, they were very concerned with getting to the afterlife and you know, where the deceased would be able to look up through the shafts and see a star. And, and they were good at knowing where the stars were and predicting how they would line up in relation to the structures, which is one of the more impressive aspects of the pyramid. And, uh, like, when I look at this one, it's actually, it looks on first glance uh, and on the second and third, <laughs> quite different from the previous ones. Yeah, we have, like, the, the same idea about the structure, for, about, uh, like, this fractal uh, endlessness, uh, and uh, the technique is similar, uh, but it's using different colors. Uh, overall, it... Uh, uh, like the color is uh, quite different than the previous ones. Uh, yeah, it's simple, as you said, uh, but also like the strokes uh, seem more of uh, like rough, not so detailed. Uh, so for, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Because for sure that's, uh, that's deliberate. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's trying to look more, um, more like, like you said, rough, but the way the paint strokes work it's kind of like a expressionistic painting like uh like a jackson pollock type of painting mm -hmm. so if you were to take jackson pollock and combine that with piet mondrian and um you know maybe some some more modern uh sacred geometry influenced art and layer all those together this might be what you would get and when you look into some of the really rough areas of the paint strokes, you can actually start to see some images and shapes. And I find this fascinating because, you know, everyone's going to see something a little different. But I, I see a lot of faces and doorways, people. Um, sometimes there's birds. And especially when you look down... In the left-hand corner at the bottom of the shaft there, where it's dark, and you can see like some triangular light-colored shapes in there. Yeah. And I, I think of that as sort of like fire. Like yeah, there's fire yeah. inside of this shaft, and it's being compressed and ready to shoot out, almost like an engine. You know, you take fire in an engine... Or combustion and then you use that to transfer into mechanical energy so you're converting something from one form into another yeah that's so cool yeah I, I i saw the fire there as well and it almost seems like a chimney uh having mm -hmm. being like dark uh but it gets uh, narrower so yeah then you get the feeling for uh some sort of machinery or something like that like uh, some compression yeah that's really cool exactly 
Yeah, that's, I, I would uh, take that as a manual how to look at the, all of them. <laughs> Because, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's quite nice and uh, you really can find a lot, but you need to spend the time. Other than, uh, if you don't, then yeah, it's just colors. Nice. Right, so, yeah, you can, you can see them on both of those levels, depending on how deep you want to look. Yeah, if... Uh, Yeah, if, uh, if someone's uh, lose, uh, lost sound, just uh, reboot it, uh, press F5 or whatever uh, you have and you get your sound back. It's just a small glitch. Okay, uh, let's move uh, to the next one or something else to uh, on this one. Okay, so uh, next would be prismatic textile number five, which is up here. Um. It's not the one directly behind the stage. It's the one to the left of the stage here. You can see the writing on the bottom. Prismatic textile number five, bridges and tunnels. Yeah, that's what Ultra was saying is his favorite. Yeah, mine too. Oh, I love this one. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, guys, yeah. It's, not, it's not minted yet, so if you can't buy that. Uh, I mean, just the first three uh, are minted. But yeah, this one is beautiful. I, I actually think I may have minted this one today. I'm trying to remember. I minted a couple ones today. Oh, okay. Okay. Let me see in the collection. Yeah, they're uh, they're all in the, the Open Sea collection. Yeah, I can see just the one, two, three. Uh, uh, maybe something. Uh, yeah. Maybe it's coming really, uh, really fast. Yeah, I try to try to stay organized with all of all of that but sometimes you forget so so this one really gets back into a more complex uh level there's there's these gears and wheels again kind of like what you saw on number two there's this element of duality the yin and the yang bridges and tunnels and you can see elements of what we saw in the pyramid on the other one there's the shaft leading down to the bottom left hand corner and the fire and the gear kind of in that same spot on the shaft and then that leads up to the pyramid and there's sort of this line of light going into the pyramid and if you follow that over it turns into darkness and then It goes on top of the bridge, and if you look closely, there's a train, like a steam engine on top of the bridge up there. Ah, and so right. what we, yeah. yeah, yeah, and then underneath, there's another shaft of light that's kind of moving along the groove, kind of meeting where that train is leading. Huh. And we have this, this uh, almost like a goddess, like a woman up there in the sky reaching down and she's touching this point of light that's just in front of the train like the train is kind of pulling its way over to where she's pointing on the bridge and opposite of that the old man on the clock you know like father time <laughs> and then in the bubble below you can see the uh figure I don't know how well you can see it, um, but there's a person who's holding a staff inside that bubble. He's kind of standing on like a mountain looking out into this abyss. So this is, I imagine, what he is seeing. Some explorer standing on top of a cliff looking out. And that's actually based on, uh, I don't know if anyone here is familiar with Casper David Friedrich, the romantic painter? Uh, not really, not me. He, uh, he had this famous piece called Wanderer Above the Sea of Fog. Uh, you'd probably recognize that one if you saw it. Um, you know, even if you don't know him by name, that piece that he has is uh, a pretty well-known one. And it's there's actually a few different... Um, spin-offs and spoofs that people have done i'm surprised that we haven't seen much of it in the nft space yet but it's really the 
<clears throat> the explorer standing on this rock outcropping, holding a walking stick. And you see from his perspective, because you're standing behind him, looking out into this foggy abyss with this grand landscape. Oh, yeah, I, I really love this one. And uh, uh, like particular here, it's it's much more clear to see the yin yang. And I like uh, how it's in uh, like put on top of or like uh, merged together uh, with the flower of uh, life. Uh, right. So, so it's, uh, it's, it's it re reinforces the, the symbol of uh, yin yang, that it's not just abstract thing, but it's tied to uh, some real thing that could uh, uh, actually represent anything. So, yeah, I really love that. It's a cool idea. Ne never seen it before, actually. Uh, uh, probably, I, I don't know, is it, uh, is it your creation or uh, did you get inspiration somewhere else? I've actually, I've never seen anyone else put the flower of life within the yin-yang symbol like that either. And I'm not sure why, because um, when you create a yin-yang, there's the big circle and then the two yeah. smaller circles inside. And if you simply rotate those around, you get the flower of life. Yeah. So yeah. It, it just so, fits so well. It's so cool. So cool. And uh, yeah, actually, I would like to congratulate Arthur uh, that just bought your Genesis piece. So uh, that's great. And also congratulate you for thank something you, next time. <laughs> oh, very cool. And thank you, Arthur. Thank you. Thank you. It's really, really mesmerizing stuff. Thank you so I'll, I'll, much. I'll, I'll put I'll put in my in my parcels to hypnotize people so that they never leave. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's very cool. Very cool art. Uh, I'm a fan. Thank you. Awesome. So I think we have uh, one more. Uh, yeah, I think we have one last more, and then we're uh, going to look at the uh, uh, loom, digital loom. So uh, lead us to the last one. Yeah, if I think uh, everyone knows which one that is, just uh, behind us. Yeah, so tell us, tell us about this one. It's also quite different. Okay, so I can't hear anyone. Can, can someone confirm that uh, you can hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, yeah, you can hear me so far. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just our artists. Yeah, can hear you. Yeah, we can't hear you. Uh, so far, if you are trying to talk, uh, just refresh the browser and come back in, and uh, uh, you should be able to uh, uh, get back and uh, talk to us. Do you like most guys? Yeah. The one, the right, the left. <laughs> Keeping the conversation, guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm typing. So I, I'm typing. Uh, so keep it up, because uh, <laughs> I don't know if he can hear me. So <laughs> work with me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I really like his works, man. Um, it's actually like it's kind of both a bit psychedelic and you know really realistic. It's kind of really sharp and really soft at the same time. Really, really nice. Scholar film, you know, Scholar film is really a stupid, like, you know, he, he's doing something one way, the way, you know, like he has his way in a style like this. So, you know, it's really significant. Uh, it shows, you know, like uh, how committed and, and how researched his work is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I was actually quite shocked uh, uh, learning about how long it actually takes to create the physical piece. Uh, it sort of makes sense. Uh, but um, yeah, that if he's just using it as sort of like meditation and uh, putting like w when you Mandela. make it long like this, uh, then you really can f use the subconscious. It's not uh, like if you do it uh, immediately, then yeah, you can have the inspiration, but a lot of it will be conscious mind. 
But if you do it long time, then you will have a lot of ideas that just come to the surface and you, you put them there and it's uh, this process and you can't, uh, uh, you can't cheat it uh, that way. Because uh, mm -hmm. like a lot of, a lot of those symbols, like you can, f you can find them in many places, but um, in, f but usually f in like here you can find uh, quite rare, or of a unique uh, point of uh, point of view, like uh, using the uh, yin yang yang symbol on top of uh, uh, the flower of life, and there's actually many more uh, things like this here. Yeah, like if you look at the right, for example, there's like the Fibonacci sequence, sequence, you know, the kind of uh, yeah. snail shell and all, and in the same time you have the point in the middle, which looks a bit like if it's a uh, golden ratio, you know, but you know, in in, in kind of like uh, in the center, but not in the center of the shell. Kind of like a, a proportion that's quite, you know, uh, it, it gives you, you know, those two aspects together. It's quite crazy. It's the one on the right, I mean, uh, you know, in the entrance. Yeah, cool. And Ultra Art is actually uh, telling us that uh, it has some co a sort of term in the psychology incubation. It's awesome. Never mm -hmm. heard about that. Yeah, just, just the old right. game. <laughs> It makes sense because it looks like, you know, it's coming from the center, the one with the lines coming from, and, you know, still the Fibonacci sequence is kind of like extracted from it. So it feels like you're going in, out, in, out. So I understand the, the meaning, the term incubation, or maybe not the, the, the real uh, effect or what they want to do with it, but the, what it looks like definitely makes sense with the word. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, for Prismatic Textiles, you are here and you are trying to talk. Uh, <laughs> we can't hear you, unfortunately. Uh, so if you can hear us, uh, you can refresh. Yeah, but uh, we can actually use, uh, use the time. And, well, if he will not be able to come back, then there will be more secrets that uh, you can discover by looking at his profile, his website, and reaching out to him directly. But we have one more surprise that we can uh, see uh, even uh, without him. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you can't get everything for Ultra. So let's come up and let's look at the video of the Digital Loom and uh, maybe we will be lucky and he will be able to come, come back. Yeah, let's wait for everyone uh, before we uh, turn it on. Oh, maybe some of you already did. Uh, yeah, okay. I think we have enough people. Uh, so let's see, where's the button? Yeah, I, oh, it's actually out of place. So yeah, that's cool. Saved by miracle. Yeah, so you can actually see here uh, that uh, like uh, clicking different uh, types of elements here, like the shape matrix, rhythm, and color scheme, uh, you are able to create uh, different uh, uh, symbols or like simplified textiles, if we can uh, tell, tell, if we can call them that. Actually, I haven't played with it. Uh, it's available on. Um, I think it's on his uh, website, uh, which is uh, prismatictextile.com. Uh, you can see uh, all the all the pictures there, not just the ones that are minted. And uh, I think there's uh, the digital loom available there. I can find it now, but uh, well, you will be probably more lucky than me later. So far, yeah, it's it's quite a cool thing. And let's see. No, I can't, I can't see him or hear him here. And so if, uh, maybe if, uh, let's uh, give it the last shot and then if, uh, normally I would open it for questions, but uh, no, it would be more like comments because uh, yeah, I'm uh, certainly not qualified to answer them. Uh, so I'm back. I think uh, ah, you're back. Awesome. Guys, it's talking, but I don't know if you could hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. You are downstairs, right? 
Yeah, so, just walked upstairs. Ah, yeah, yeah, you are here. Oh, I can see you. Uh, yeah, so f let's come closer to the f loom uh, so you can tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, awesome, we have you back. Uh, I was some people really worried that uh, you will not be able to answer their questions. <laughs> so tell us, what are we looking? So here we can see the thing that ties all the pieces together. This is the digital loom, which is the software program that you can use to explore all these different layers of media. So this is an interactive piece. In the center window, we can see dropping down all of these different sort of tapestries with patterns in them. I call those the shape matrix uh, squares. And there's three different columns on the left. So you can when you're using the loom, you can choose these. You toggle them on or off. When you hit one of the squares, the corresponding shape matrix will then drop down and show up in the square. When you press the button for rhythm, if it's the corresponding rhythm, it will then start to play a drum groove that I've recorded. So each of the shape matrix uh, shapes have a drum groove that goes along with them and a color scheme. And they're all based on mathematical and uh, abstract ideas within each of the prismatic textile paintings. Anyone has any questions to this? Uh, I would normally do it at the end, but uh, for when we are standing here, for, it's, it's a great idea to ask it now. So uh, any questions about the digital loom? Yeah, everyone's speechless. <laughs> so they, they, they might uh, uh, reach out uh, to you later. So uh, let's, uh, because we are a little bit running out of time. Uh, so let's jump uh, downstairs and uh, you tell us about the last painting. Then we uh, go to the questions and then we go to the party. Okay, sounds good. And I just see that someone uh, mentioned incubation in psychology. Yeah, so nice a, pick. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah, so uh, we're standing in front of the seventh piece, which completes the first cycle of paintings. This is prismatic textile number seven, the shadow of a reflection. And I would say, if you look in the middle of the painting at the very bottom, it's a good spot to look. And you, you might not be able to see it too well on here. Um, but at the very bottom, there's sort of like a bridge that goes over that, that center groove. And underneath the bridge is a blue figure in a meditation pose. That's based on the Medicine Buddha, which is a blue Buddha that's supposed to be um, he's kind of along the lines of like healing, physical healing, but also spiritual and emotional healing for people and as a society or a group. And rising up through the center of the piece, there's sort of like a flame, which uh, you can actually see a figure in the middle there. So... If you go up to the second groove, the second horizontal groove up above that little opening, sort of like a doorway, you can see a heart shape just in the middle where those grooves intersect. And this is kind of inspired by, uh, some of you may have seen imagery of where you take the crucifixion and then you combine that with the tree of life. So it's sort of like climbing up this tree of awareness and the crucifixion being this point where these two different worlds meet 
and that is implied by the horizontal and the vertical. So mm. sort of this idea of like death and rebirth being the key to moving on to some sort of higher level of awareness and not necessarily literal death. You know, it could be thought of as when you're a teenager, you think in a certain way and you have a certain way of approaching life. And eventually a lot of that has to kind of die off for you to mature into your adult self. And that happens at any phase of life where people uh, mature and move on to different things. And I wonder if people can see on this. Uh, there's small little thumbnails of all the other prismatic textile paintings that are incorporated into this. Uh, that's so cool. I can probably tell which one, <laughs> which is which. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, they're in that horizontal band going across. And you can, uh, I think pyramid you can make out pretty well. Yeah. yeah. On the right hand side there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But there's uh, a lot of this one is the element of you know, it's reflection of the past and sort of like turning the page. So it's the end of the first cycle of paintings and this idea of, you know, the death of the first cycle leading to the birth of the next cycle and this sort of reflection of night and day, which is why I named it the shadow of a reflection. Cool. Yeah, it's, 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 it's perfect uh, closing piece uh, for a uh, whole collection. Is it the last one, right? Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah. Well, cool. So, for any questions, people? This was uh, wonderful. Learned a lot. Uh, so, far, do you have anything unresolved? Some questions? I see someone mentioned catacombs on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up with pyramids <laughs> and the catacombs? Yep, and the catacombs. There's definitely that element to this piece, you know, that uh, like you're kind of walking through the catacombs and it's this reflection of everyone's lives that they've lived. Yeah, thank you, Volter, for all the for the questions and uh, witty comments. Yeah, so really good to have uh, have it interactive. Cool. Anything else? Probably not. So for, we are going to for close uh, this exhibition. I would say it was uh, uh, amazing success. You were actually able to for, to sell your for first piece in the collection. Uh, yeah, that's uh, awesome. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's wonderful. And uh, maybe more uh, coming, uh, especially if, uh, after Arthur if, uh, puts it into if, uh, one of his uh, galleries where if, uh, a lot of people come uh, and uh, he, uh, he brings there if, uh, a lot of important people. So if, uh, uh, it could really help this as well. And uh, yeah, so thank you very much, everyone. Uh, we are going to if, uh, continue on the Blake's parcel. It's going to be in VR. So if you can't uh, make it uh, because uh, you don't have uh, the tech, uh, don't worry. You can still uh, join us uh, on the Twitch. I'm going to uh, post uh, here uh, the link to my Twitch so you can join there. And uh, it will take me a little while to get there. But uh, yeah, we are continuing. So thank you very much and have a nice day. Bye. Thank you, everyone. OK, guys, so let's uh, hit the party. It's going to be at uh, Blake's place. There's already uh, people partying there. So far, it's going to be epic. But uh, before we get there, we had to get this thing started. So it's going to take a while. Loading 
Setting updates. And we are going in. Ah, hello for who just joined. Can you say hi? Yeah, maybe if, uh, if you don't have an account, it's a good idea to get an account so you can follow me and uh, watch everything that's here, get the notifications and all the good stuff. Uh, now we are running for a car so we can get there fast. can find Blake here. Whoa. Hello Blake! Hi uh, man! Hello my lord! Good. What the my brother dude? I just accidentally uh, <laughs> my, I crashed. Here we go. There we go baby! Advertisement? How are we doing Skip. brother? Do you... Excellent! <laughs> shit. Oh, hold on, let me turn on the shit. There we go. How are you my brother? Yeah I'm awesome! Wow! We are in the sea! Oh, that looks so this good. Oh, hold on. So, you, so what, what are you seeing right now? Yeah, I'm seeing uh, the guy uh, with uh, some tech uh, standing on a pier uh, with the uh, sea behind him. Uh, a lot of water, cool music. So for some reason, for some reason, it, it didn't reload for oh, you. Okay. It still has the old, the old video. Right now, it's got a Twitch on there. Ah, so I should go. Did to... you did you just spawn 2D in in here? Uh, I don't know. Uh, no. Uh, yeah. Well, actually, I did. Uh, so should I put uh, the uh, your if, pitch? If you walk, off the if you walk off the parcel and come back on, it should reset. Yeah, I can. I can just type it in. For, it's it's your, your okay, pitch. Okay. So so it, it's yeah. Twitch. Tw uh, it's Hot's House Live. Okay. My yeah. man, I appreciate you, dude. Fucking dude, that was an excellent show, though. That guy was cool. Yeah, yeah. It's actually it's, uh, Arthur's uh, bought one of his pieces. Yeah, I gotta say that that his his all of his artwork was excellent, bro. It's like that is what it's all about. Let's go. Welcome to the party. Thanks, guys, for following. Let's go. Yeah, you have it. So Yo, guys, thank you for the follow. Let's fucking go. We got our man Artific in here who held the art exhibition right before this. Throwing it down, baby. We got Rudaraj all the way from India giving us a heavy-duty techno mix, baby. Let's get this minimal movement on and have some fun. My awesome. Bad. A, uh, I'm still trying to figure out how to make it so that we can mute ourselves and unmute. Oh, sounds good. Yeah, it's cool. 
I can hear I can hear it. I can put it more. Uh, no. yeah. It's a little bit uh, on the uh, downside. On the yeah. So let's do it's this. Low. Hello. Uh, I'm going to do. Ah, yeah, hello! Hello, uh, Tom yeah. Coutinho, Prismatic Textiles. Yeah, so if, uh, you can see uh, the Blake's channel, it's pretty cool. Let's go, baby! Cool, yeah. It's a little bit light, so, if, uh, so it's a bit dead, but uh, yeah, we have Ultra Art here. Yo, what's cool. up? Hello! My man! Oh, give me no. a big old hug, dude. Let's go. Is this Peppy? Oh gosh. Yeah. Let's get you up in the. Let's get you in the light, baby. Come yeah. here. Yeah, these avatars are awesome. Where is it? Woo! <laughs> look, at this, look at this man. Look at this red nipples. <laughs> He's you've been rubbing them too much. <laughs> dude, your texture is hilarious. This is so good. <laughs> I love you, Ultra Lord, brother. Yo, give me give me a fucking another big old hug, dude. Thank you so much. Yeah. Buying the first hot scroll, bro. I love Yo, you, you know so I have much, one, bro. Dude, we you mean the world, me, brother. I fucking we the say. Dude, that literally meant that. I was like, you motherfucker. I was like, who body? Oh my god, dude, I love you, bro. Are you good man and you well, I'm gonna try and get some people on the Twitch. I'm gonna uh, go over the corner real quick so you guys can talk. By the way, that's something I need to figure out is how to make it so that I can hear voices but the stream cannot. Ah, oh, right. That's some advanced somehow, stuff. Somehow. That's some advanced stuff. But you will figure it out. There's gotta be some way of routing it. Yeah, no, you, do, you, do you have voice meet meter? So I just downloaded banana meter or whatever it's called, yeah. Uh, that's what the gem base said to do. Oh. Uh, voice meter banana. Wow. <laughs> Here we go. Oh. Yeah. Tracks hot. <laughs> Dude, yo, I gotta say, your character, this character, when you do the dance moves, is by far my favorite character because you look so <laughs> classy and sexy. It's so, <laughs> dude, it's so funny, bro. I literally every time I every time I watch a clip and I see him dance, I literally am losing it because it's like so, yeah. it's just so golden, dude. I love it. Yeah, but he's actually, so classy even with his boots. Yeah, but actually, when you look at the uh, look at this avatar walk uh, or run, it looks so funny. It's like uh, so ridiculous because uh, like all the bones are wrong. <laughs> it's just look as yeah. I don't know. I don't want to say it on stream. It's, it's, like, it's literally just so clutch, though, bro. <laughs> yeah, because, it's like it's such a perfect you know, tar. Like, see it. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. yeah, yeah, right here, right here. <laughs> Well, uh, actually, for uh, Blake, uh, question, technical question. Maybe some uh, some people on Twitch will um, appreciate it as well. Maybe probably what? not. Uh, how do you rate uh, someone? Because I could actually rate you, and I think it would be quite cool. Well, I'm having a really hard time hearing you. Um, all right, hold on. Now, now I can probably hear. It's just noisy. All right, so hold on. what were you saying? How do I arrange what? Uh, rate you. Like you rated me. Uh, so how do I rate you? Uh, so for the people that oh, are watching you do me now, slash, so, you, so you go slash raid and then space type in, uh, then you can type in I'm Blake Hots. Okay. My man. Bam, 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 bam. Oh, Dude, cool. this is Pepe the Frog, bro. <laughs> the toes are so cool. Uh, bro, what did you say? Really seen the other day, man. So yo, it's everyone, right yo, everyone was all slash? over me. Touching my nipples and everything. Uh, slash raid, uh, slash raid, R A I D. Yeah, yeah, I have and it. Then, and then your, uh, your name. Space. And oh, then space, space, I'm Blake Hotz, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, so, so guys, uh, that are watching, uh, three of you, perfect. Uh, I'm going to do Let's go. some, something that I've never done before. I'm going to raid. Uh, 
Uh, ah, thank you for Blake's that, baby. We're, we're doing it. We're learning together. So you guys are uh, going to be on his Twitch, uh, which is uh, pretty cool. And you will be able to see similar things and uh, you will be able to follow him because he's doing uh, cool content. He has a lot of uh, great musicians and a lot of cool stuff. And we are doing a lot of uh, projects together. So uh, it's good uh, that you uh, see his uh, stream as well. So cool, let's do it. All right, Blake Hots, enter. And uh, so so much love, baby. So much love. Let's go. I don't know. Did did something happen? Uh, viewers are uh, ready to write right now. Cool. So I think we are doing it. Yo, big huzzah <laughs> to the baby. We got we got Yark just raiding us with the Artifix crew, baby. Welcome in, motherfuckers. A good ass time. We're about to jam out here. Artifix the man. Ultra Lord's the fucking man. He's got big old Pepe the frog in the crib. We're about to get down to some techno. Hopefully you guys are in for it, baby. Let's go. Happy Tuesday. Grab your drinks and smokes. Let's fucking jam. Yeah, so then, follow up question. Uh, no, I stopped for my stream, right? <laughs> or how does some it work? I'm sorry, I'm having such a hard time hearing you with the music. Yeah, yeah, so if I'm for uh, now, if I should just stop my stream, uh, my streaming. Yep, yep, now you, now you can stop your stream. Cool. I, I heard the raid, the raid was successful. I heard it. Uh, 